1.30 Martin Living Showcase is being held in the central feature with all the latest innovations for saving money and energy for each room in your home. At the Ideal Home Exhibition in London, people come and go, dreaming about new labour-saving devices, new possibilities, new designs for living. It's a fantastic product. OK, and then you lean on it and you get your French fries. Not everything here is a design classic, but everything here has been designed to meet a need, fulfil a desire, or simply to raise a cheer at the breakfast table. The people who worry about this kind of stuff are called designers. They worry about stuff, not in general, but in particular. The fine detail of stuff. The stuff we build our lives from. They worry about it so that we don't have to. Our mission, our reason to, to be doing what we're doing is to uh, make a make a better world for the small things. OK, they're not scientists, they're not engineers, they're certainly not writers, but they're doing work which is extremely critical to the function of our society. I mean, if design has got anything to offer us, it ought to be that our relationship to objects becomes more thoughtful, wiser, deeper, better considered. Think about your toothbrush being designed until you put a badly designed toothbrush in your mouth. Contigo! So where does design come from? What does it mean to be a designer? What is the special nature, the genius of this thing that we call design? This series sets out to answer those questions. And along the way, we'll tell the story of the world that the designers have made for us. be a hostile place for us human beings. But frail and fragile as we are, we've managed to survive it, and even thrive in it, thanks to our innate skills as designers. Starting from the simplest stone axe, we've developed tools of increasing sophistication that offer a handle on the most unpromising environment. In fact, our design skills have reached such heights that these days we even manufacture facsimiles of environments which were once all too real and threatening. As for the modern city, the sheer density of design here reaches an almost organic level of complexity. The modern city is a new kind of nature, man-made nature. It reflects back an image of ourselves through the things we have designed. But for the designer, the world is not enough. Plans for a new improved version are always on the drawing board. I think designers um always imagine that something could be better, that uh, whatever it is now, uh, rethinking, 
um, taking advantage of new technologies of production. All of that, I think, drives them on to the idea that they're making a better mousetrap. This is a standard measuring cup, but the key thing is, is that it's made to be um, so that you can read it from above, and it's resting on the tabletop, and it's stable. So how many of us, when you put stuff in a liquid in a measuring cup, you have to then hold it up? And if it's a liquid, then it gets disturbed, and you can't quite tell. And it's this kind of thing, by the way, that I love about design, because some of the problems of the world are so difficult to solve. Problems of disease, of poverty, uh, my gosh, uh, how are we going to solve those problems? And so it's inspirational to see somebody actually solve a problem. Uh, it's not a huge problem in the world, but at least it was solved. This is Dieter Rams. In a 50-year career, he can claim to have solved his fair share of problems with products you may well have switched on or washed up at some time or other. If you didn't notice them, Rams would be pleased. Design, says Rams, should be as discreet as an English butler. But I had in my mind to make the things more quieter. That I always had in my mind. Rams is in Tokyo to oversee the opening of an exhibition dedicated to a lifetime's work. And, as ever, to make sure things are just so. You see? This is more correct now. He's also on hand to explain his Ten Commandments, as authoritative and compact as the original. The first, that is good design, is innovative. The second will good design makes the product useful. Uh, and, of course, the third, is good design, is aesthetic design. 